All right, chat. Patch two, Baldur's Gate three. Patch two, patch notes. Hello, everybody. Patch two for Baldur's Gate three is now live, bringing bug fixes, substantial performance improvements, and much more. If you missed out on our community news, we highly recommend you give it a read here for a glimpse of the future of Baldur's Gate three at the role your feedback is playing in that. Still here, great. Uh, Withers had heard tales of Tavs having requested the presence of their friends for an afternoon afternoon of adventuring, wanting to return to the lifestyle of solo adventurer. Hold on a second, something just popped up in the way here. Um, okay. Uh, solo adventures with their friends in tow. Therefore, he's come up with a solution, introducing Wither's wardrobe of wayward friends. With this woodworked wonder, you can now dismiss co-op party members and bring your companions back into the fold. That's pretty nice. This means we can now play uh, just like a session or two with a friend, or if like a friend quits, we can come. We could still salvage the campaign, etc. That's a really nice change. Wither's solution only extends to custom tabs, however, so no throwing Gale into a cupboard. Although we sure we're sure it's comfy in there. As well as plenty of performance improvements and UI tweaks, we've added a new epilogue scene for Karlak, and we're working on additional endgame scenes featuring other characters. Additional Karlak moments have also been added in Acts 1 and 2, allowing her to better reflect on her infernal engine and the options available to her. We prepared the highlights of patch 2 below, followed by the main meat of the update. Thank you for sharing your feedback with us and your continued support. And for your continued support, if you have any issues with Baldur's Gate 3, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team. Highlights. Introduce the wardrobe, performance optimizations across the board, and reduce the size of save games. Sure. Uh, Karlak has a concluding scene. Um, some spoilers that I'm not going to reveal here. Basically, people were unhappy with the uh, resolution of Karlak's storyline, uh, and she is certainly a very popular character, probably my favorite character, quite honestly. She just has a really enjoyable personality to have on your team. The Her enthusiasm cracks me up every single time. So this looks like there's a number of uh, changes with her storyline stuff, which I won't spoil here. All right, blockers fix potentially getting stuck in combat between a player character because a player character cannot be selected to end their turn. Fix an issue causing you to get stuck in a dialogue with um, people I don't know by the Sword Coast Couriers, okay? Added a delete all but latest option for each campaign so you can regain a little storage space wiggle room. That's a really nice feature too. Quality of life. Delete all but latest saves. <laughs> it's gonna be a scary button to click. Let's hope that save works, but all right, added new icons for equipped. Added new icons for equipped items. It's easier to tell if they're equipped by a uh, selected character. One of your characters, another player's character, who's hoarding all the interesting equipment. Added item rarity filters to the inventory. Those are both nice. Your turn notification now lists which character's turn it is. Also nice. The character summary and level up will now update to reflect changes in ability scores. Cool. Uh, that was one of the ones you're always not quite sure if someone was applying right or not. The active search list now persists after being opened and is more informative. An actual radial action radial now creates containers for spells created by other spells, making them easier to manage, okay? All right, fix an issue blocking saving. Fix a crash when finishing character creation. Fix a crash when generating loot that can't be picked up. Fix a crash when switching between the controller and keyboard. Fix a crash when assigning an action to a slot. Okay, a bunch of crash fixes here. Anything that particularly stand out? Um... Doesn't really look like it. No one gets stuck in a dialogue if you disconnect. Okay, I haven't played any multiplayer stuff, so there's no disconnecting. Okay. Performance and optimization. Improved performance and made optimizations across the and made optimizations across the game. Okay. Improved CPU load, made performance improvements related to controller movement, made optimizations for when moving around the world on a controller, move surface. Move surface texture and decal creation to worker threads. Move loading shroud textures to worker threads. When AI can use a near a nearby a nearby AI hint, limit AI flooding. I have no idea what that one means. Improve minimap performance. Optimize the controller map by removing some duplicate items. Reduce the size of save games. Made changes to loading screens. Making made in older patch notes. Made changes to make loading save games made in older patch versions significantly faster. Okay, these changes will continue to make loading old save games speedier in any patch and hot fixes to come. Remove some unnecessary calls from the hot bar to update to improve on stuttering. Slightly delayed when tooltips pop up when hovering items over items like actions, items, and spells. This prevents the game from unnecessary loading and unloading tooltips. The delay is now set to 200 milliseconds. Uh, more optimizations for selectable elements on controller, removed an irrelevant sound analytics event for optimization, fixed a memory leak when opening the inventory with a controller connected, fixed a memory leak when streaming textures, and wrote velocity vectors to help with overall visual quality. All of this sounds really good so far. Okay. All right. UI. Hotbar and HUD. Made the hotbar icons for the number of unlocked and available spell slots you have more intuitive. 
You need the hotbar icons for the number of unlock and available spell slots you have more intuitive. God, I hope they just put a number on it. Like I like the dots and all, but it was knowing when I have one or zero was like, I, I, I've, I've struggled with that for all of like 200 hours of last playthrough. Fix hotbar sliders disappearing when uh, changing the selected character when sliding them. Fix the portraits of summons not fitting in their frames in the party line, sure. Inventory. Improve the light source tooltip to clarify the purpose of the slot. That is probably helpful. Remove duplicate close prompts when the equipment slot pop-up is open. Tweak the layout of equipment slots in the character screen on split screen. If you're carrying a character in your inventory and the weight of the character's inventory changes, that character's weight now updates too. If you're carrying a character in your inventory. All right. This is an edge case I have not yet encountered, but I'm excited to find out why you'd be carrying a character in your inventory. Okay. All right, combat. Fix portraits and the turn order UI sometimes disappearing under certain conditions. Fix the combat log not always showing attack damage rolls after loading a save game. That's kind of nice. It means you can mess around with your uh, your testing and still get better answers. Fix the advantage and disadvantage indicators sometimes showing up in the active role UI and dialogue even if you didn't have any available. The combat log when I have entries for all items looted from corpses. Fix the health bar animation. Um, fix summon something missing its portrait and character model in the examine. We won't We won't spoil that. Um, fix the saving throw overhead icon appearing over very much dead characters. Fix attack roll bonuses sometimes being duplicated as penalties beneath the turn order UI in combat. We've had some weird bugs where some of our uh, bonuses were triggered as penalties. I wonder if that one got them all or not. I don't remember them being attack roll bonuses though. I remember them being um, saves, but maybe. Added information to reaction tooltips about whether the reaction is enabled and whether it's set to ask you before triggering or not. Cool. Uh, the ask icon for reactions is not only editable when a reaction is enabled. Fix the learn more spells button, opening the window for the currently selected character instead of the character whose character sheet you clicked it on. Fixed hard-coded text saying manage power so they can be translated. Okay. I was hoping to see, I guess we're not there yet. I'm hoping to see something to do with the spells. This is, I just, you guys can't see it, but I can. I, again, this is another huge patch notes. All right. Journal. There are lots of speakers in a dialogue. The list of their names will no longer be cut off in dialogue history UI. Quest categories and entries in the journal will now remember whether you've expanded or collapsed them. Traded. Added a mouse over a label to the balance offer button in the barter UI for clarity. I wish they would do something with trading about the um, about marking items as wares and then encountering a vendor who doesn't have enough money for the marked items as wares. There should just be like add wares to the point of getting as close to the vendor's uh, money as you can get. Because marking items as wares is a really nice inventory management that I, thing that you can do as you move across the course of the game, and it's really annoying to actually get to the vendor and find out that you have more money than the vendor has, and you can't sell you can't sell the wares, and you have to do them all individually anyways when you do this. So it'd be nice if they got around to fixing that. Tooltips: fix conditions on nested tooltips not showing on pin tooltips. Added agonizing blast charisma modifier bonus to the damage on the eldritch blast tooltip. Cool. Saves: added the difficulty setting to the save game information. Save games will now save under your character's name, even if you're polymorph. No more save games called sheep. And updated text to fit a button in the load save window. Organize the keybinds menu and categories to make it more user friendly. Reordered and reworked the option menus to make them more intuitive. The option menu now closes when you enter dialogue when it's open. Fix the reset tutorials button in the option menu not working as expected. Okay. Uh, you can skip the level up animations now. Fix the class icon overlapping the level up banner. Fix the level up UI sometimes disappearing when leveling. Cool. Miscellaneous fixed an issue causing the UI to disappear after speaking to Blurg. I haven't seen that. Made sure some non-player facing conditions and passives don't rear their heads. Made the context menu animation snappier and tweaked the background for a brighter, neater appearance. Brightened up the tutorial pop-ups pop and improved the alignment. Fixed the change difficulty screen fading a little too late and, apparent, and appearing briefly on the main menu. Fixed overlapping text for bonus names in the active role UI. Fix some text being cut out. Okay. Fix the ping action prompt saying empty when targeting containers. Okay. Controllers. Um, do not care about controller radials. Don't really want to read through it. I'm going to be here forever if I have to do all of the lines. Uh, let's see about the character sheet. Made several improvements to the character sheet. For example, by adding a zoom capability, updating the style list, the XP bar and equipment slots, and adding an indicator for the character's main ability. Fixed the light source menu, not fixing filtering light sources properly. Added a brief description of what reactions are. Fixed the abbreviations for abilities not fitting properly in Russian. Fixed some clipping and overlapping in the character sheet. Moved the consume action to the context menu and restored the equip action as default in the inventory panel. Okay. Fixed the prompt to toggle tool... Fix the prompt to toggle tooltips showing in the character sheet filters and fix the background of slots. Fix character sheet navigation issues when using filters. 
Equipping an item via the equipment slot pop-up of the character sheet will no longer close the pop-up immediately. Reposition tooltips slightly when checking equipment slots and fix some missing tooltips in the character sheet. Okay. World interaction. Added information about the state of containers if they're empty to the active search menu. Okay. Fix a small issue in cursor error messages. Fix the ping action not exiting the ping state on the left stick press. Fix the examine panel on objects or characters with multiple resistances not scrolling properly. Made it possible to select and inspect more items in the examine panel, like item descriptions and conditions. Fix some portraits mixing the exam missing the examine panel and polished the selector. And fix the context menu not being navigatable during the D-pad. Okay. More controller stuff. Is this all controller? Oh, it's all controller. Ah, I thought some of these also were PC. I'm probably just going to skip through the rest of this then. I mean, it's good. I, I, I can't imagine playing this game on controller. There's too many things that I want to be doing. But um, I suppose as this releases to controller, it's going to be good to have a ton of controller tooltips fixed. Or um, not just tooltips, but interactions. All right. Let's go straight to the multiplayer UI then. All right. Fix secondary local players not having quest location and secret map markers unlocked until saving or loading. Fix some host error messages appearing on client screens. Dialogue interface settings such as font size should now apply to both players. Enable the combat feed on split screen. Fix some UI getting cut off. So I haven't done multiplayer on this yet because I don't have enough time left in my life to play multiplayer in this game. But it does seem like optimizing the hell out of this is good and they're fixing a bunch of stuff again. I don't know how many of you guys have started playing that. It sounds like a fun thing to do. It just feels like you're never going to finish a game ever. All right. Gameplay. If you dismiss your companion to camp and shove them into a chasm, Withers will now be able to resurrect them so you can shove them into a chasm again, probably. I guess you get bored when you're playing evil character. Okay. Clicking a party member's portrait on the map or minimap will, not, will now select the character and focus on them. Fix the client server inconsistency for attack of opportunity, causing client to incorrectly indicate that an entity will react even if it can't. Fix characters. That's interesting because you do see that. That's an annoying bug too. Walking away from prone characters. Uh, always showed them still being able to attack you and they don't so it's kind of nice I suppose to believe the UI a bit more fix character soul echoes sometimes teleporting away from where the character died fix projectiles not wanting to leave uh, not waiting for items to leave inventories fix the hide during dialogues option for helmets causing your character to lose their hair after a dialogue <laughs> I didn't notice that it's funny um, all right any of this else I, I don't know which of these to like focus on here. There's so many and there's so many, like some of them are like so incredibly important and some of them are just like a line of like almost nothing. Um, falling items will now leave turn-based mode and re-enter after falling to fix them remaining suspended in the air, okay? Remove the examine option for some objects that shouldn't be examinable. Fix knockdown entities always playing their knockdown animation when loading into a frame. Fix the falling damage number preview when preparing to jump, not always matching how much damage will actually be dealt. That's nice. It was also super annoying when it, I think we've had it where it showed us not proning and then it proned us and vice versa. Fixed edge panning not working correctly when the camera is locked to a party member. Fixed reaction is not always triggering if you sneak and then cast silence or when using Asterion's vampire bite. Active search, the searching menu search radius is increased. The camera moves to select the item and now you get a button hint for active search, okay. Tutorial pop-up for trapped items won't trigger anymore when coming near certain destroyed traps. Fix the option to pickpocket your companions, sometimes disappearing in single player. Prevents you from being able to multi-select and drop in other players' items. Fix not being able to split item stacks outside of your turn. Fix not being able to enter turn-based mode with the down character. Fix items briefly appearing beneath your feet when you pick them up. Fix being able to see characters turn towards you briefly before dialogue starts. And fix the lava VFX disappearing if you load a game that was saved during the combat with Grim. I think that actually happened to us too. Okay. Combat and balance. Now, this is this is a category that I'm excited about. No! <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Let's go find combat and balance. Scammed. All right. Here. Fixed an issue with auras causing NPCs to make inefficient choices like running towards you to shove you, then running away again to make a ranged attack. Okay. Fix so-and-so blasting right through the ice shields you can hide behind. Aggressive beasts now enter combat instead of fleeing when attack from afar. Additionally, when you attack an NPC from afar out of combat, they're now more likely to sprint up to you instead of getting stuck. Fix your resources now not getting restored on your next turn if you join a combat late. Something is no longer too stubborn to die. I should now go down to zero HP or remain knocked out. The timer in the Chamber of Courage will now reflect the correct number of turns remaining. We had a timer issue, but I don't think it was Chamber of Courage. I wonder if they also fix that. Fix certain spells not taking into account inherited conditions and updated the grace period of joining combat late to be at the end of the world items turn in the first round. Okay. Hopefully this makes the 
surprise round partial in um, entering of combat from your team be a little bit less buggy for us. All right, flow and scripting. Fixed silenced characters not being able to start story critical dialogues like with other party members or bosses at the end of combat. Fix an issue causing party members to be silenced after every dialogue. If you break an oath as a paladin, the oathbreaker might knight will now come back to your camp in later acts despite how much you may have scandalized him. Fix companions sometimes not saying anything during dialogues are supposed to make comments. That supposedly is going to be a big one, right? This is like 1500 Minthara missing interactions that were that have been re-added presumably from something like that. Fix an issue where only the character who accepted the quests from Lucretius to find dribbles could talk to her after doing so. Fix Gale not reacting to you having something. Fix Gale's dialogue for okay, these these are maybe not so important. Flow and scripting is a big one for us though. This is what kicked me out of Act 3 was the flow and scripting of this. So kind of be curious to see how this doesn't seem like a super deep set of changes here. Uh okay. Not seeing those. <laughs> Good, more uh, Moonrise Tower boat bug fixes. Fixed a bug causing a steering to be permanently knocked out by, okay, fixed a bug where Gortash had a dialogue bubble over him being knocked out, but click on him when it result in the dialogue. All right. And Dark Urge spoilers. You don't think, you don't think uh, this includes Mintara patch stuff? Fixed companions sometimes not saying anything during dialogues where they're supposed to make comments. I felt like that was the bug they're talking about, but maybe not. All right, you can now skip the level up animation. Fix characters and character screen sometimes getting obscured by tooltips or on on controller. Spell tooltips. The character screen will now now always show up in the same horizontal alignment. Fix the class icon overlapping the level up banner. These are a lot of small display issues, huh? Level design and map. Fix some artifacts disappearing on appearing on the bottom right of the screen due to fog of war. Fix the map not showing working correctly in one of the one area of the goblin camp. Fix a bug preventing you from walking on certain items. Actually, not that impactful then, huh? So some small bug fixes from what we're interested in, like kind of, I mean, quick quick release on this patch notes and no complaints of a bunch of bug fixes. And if the performance issues are big, as chat just pointed out, then that will be really nice. But not actually seeing many bugs that I've noticed or many of the bugs that we're looking for be fixed. Like I would really like the ground effects thing be cleaned up. I would like to be able to cast spells that target the ground and apply a condition without having to have shitty DC for that. That would be really, really nice. And I would like to see more uh, clarification or more language suggesting that the uh, broken order of events in Act 3 and other lack of um, storyline consistency is being updated. Because um, it did chug a bit in Act 3, but also this the Act 3 was so unimmersive. But, I mean, this is why we're restarting, right? Plenty of time to, plenty of time for them to release more patch notes like this. All right. So, I guess kind of cool. I mean, nice to see it. But uh, I, this... And a lot of controller stuff, so if you're planning to play this with friends, uh, perhaps uh, when it releases on console soon, then um, this, might be, this might be a really good patch for you, but I don't think it impacts what we're doing too much.